Well, we're setting up the table saw. I've got it set up for 16 inches. Like I say, this material, it works just like wood. You can rip it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bevel everything. And the reason for that is if I bevel it, it gives me more surface area to use the epoxies to hold it together. That way you don't have to screw it, you don't have to nail it. But I always do anyway, just to make it stronger. All right, let's see what we can do here. Okay, we've done all our planning. We know what size we're gonna build. We know what the dimensions are gonna be. So what I done first was I went ahead and cut all my pieces. I got them cut exactly to the size I wanted. And since I'm gonna resin this together, what I decided to do was cut everything on a miter. Now the reason why I cut it on a miter is if you'll notice this surface area here is more than if it was turned like this. By putting it on miter, it gives me open pores on the material, and it also gives me a little bit wider area to uh, resin. Now what this does for me is now I've got this wider area, it's porous, it's open. When I put the resin on, it'll soak in good and it'll bond the two together. All right, let's get this project started. The first thing we wanna do is go and get everything temporary together. That way we know everything fits, the way it's supposed to before we get everything resined up. So what I do, got the screws ready, get it lined up, get your pieces lined up. Okay, here we go. We got this side fastened on. We know it works. It fits really, really good. So we'll go ahead and move on to the other side. Okay, we got it all tempered up. I just put a screw here and there just to give it a quick test to see, make sure all the joints fit perfectly and make sure the size is what I want. It's hard to tell on a GoPro, but this is gonna be a pretty nice tank. I'm gonna put a divider right in the middle that you can remove. And what that'll do is it'll make it where I can keep perch on one side, shad on the other side, or I can remove the divider and the whole thing is one big 40 gallon tank. You notice I've got the top here beveled. That way I can drop the piece right in on it. And as you can see, I built this one to where everything was beveled on the top. And the reason why is because I'm gonna make this as one solid cube. Drop this right down in there. There, it's one solid cube. So I'm gonna screw everything around the perimeter of it put the resin in it, get it all locked together the way it's supposed to be locked together. And then when that's done, I'll cut the top out of it. That way it's got the strength of this thing being one piece. So what I use to resin it and to seal the corners and to make all the connections to where they're watertight and forever, I just use plain old fiberglass resin. There's the hardener. Just make sure when you mix it up, you mix it per instructions. This stuff can get away from you real quick, but if you want a permanent 
waterproof bond that won't come loose, will never crack. This is the way to go. Now that you got it screwed all the way around, both sides, you see the resin is kind of leaking out the seams, but that's okay. That's kind of what you want. It means you got good full seams. Then you just get you some mineral spirits, wipe the excess resin off, let it set overnight and cure out, and you're done. Now here's the outside right here. I've just done a little quick sand on it. You notice it almost looks like it's welded together. Here's a look at the other side. That's not a crack, it's just the resin showing up. And you can see it's nice and sanded. Gives you a nice finish edge. A little trashy, I ain't had a chance to sand the bottom of it yet. But there you go. Gives you a nice, solid, waterproof tank. Like I say, you can fill these nail holes or these screw holes if you want to, but for me, I don't care. I'll fill them. I'm gonna either paint it or I'm gonna wrap it with a real thin gauge diamond plate to make it match my boat. Here's the inside of it. You can see I haven't took a chance to clean it yet, but everything's sealed up real, real good. You can paint the inside of this stuff. This PVC is real paintable. All right, I've completed a couple stages since the last time i done a video because it was just boring and slow. But I've mounted the top. I cut the top one piece just like the bottom. And the reason why I've done it, that way it's stronger because there's no joints in the top. Everything's mitered. Everything's resin together. You can see it makes a nice corner. Like I say, this PVC material is a great product to work with. Now, if you wanted to make a huge tank, it would be no problem. This one only holds about 40 gallons, but I made it to where I can put in the back for bluegill, perch, or shad. I'll put a filter on it, and it should be fine. All right, I've got the door cut in, and what i done was I just marked my door out of it after I put it together and cut the door out, and that way I already have the door made. So essentially, the piece I cut out just drops right back in. I'll mount a piano hinge right down through here and everything will work out good. And what I done, I took my scrap that I had left over, I screwed it to the bottom lip of this all the way around. And what that does, it just gives me something solid for this door to set on top of and it'll make it so strong you could actually walk on it with no problem whatsoever. You can see, it's gonna make a real nice tank. It's gonna be 100% waterproof and like I say, you could park a dump truck on it. And this is nothing but four by eight PVC sheets. Well, it's finished all except for painting it. I couldn't decide whether or not I was gonna just put an aluminum top cap on it uh, or paint it, and I've decided I'm gonna paint it now. And later on, if I decide to wrap it in aluminum, I will. It's a pretty good size. It holds a little bit over 40 gallons. I'm gonna put an aerator box right here, put a divider in the middle of it, that way I can put perch on one side, bluegill on the other, or perch on one side, shad on the other. Uh, I'll have no problem keeping both alive in a tank this size. That way it just keeps them separated. Or 
I'll make to where you can pull that diver the divider out and you can use it as one big tank. I've got 44 inches inside to inside and I've got 16, uh, 15 inches inside to inside this way. So she holds a little bit over 40 gallons. Plenty big enough for three average fish. Uh, you could put one really big fish in it with no problem as long as you kept the water circulating. But this one is meant to be for perch, crappie, that type of thing. I'm gonna put it in the very back of my boat. Everything looks good. Art of paint out real, real nice. You can see the corners are nice and clean. Everything worked out real, real good. It's not that heavy. It only weighs about 35 pounds, 40 pounds. I could have made it out of thinner material, but I wanted to make it like this. If a person wanted to build them a catfish line well like this, it would be no problem. I could easily make this tank up to about 150 gallons and it wouldn't weigh but maybe 50 pounds at most when it was done. Uh, like I say, pretty pleased with it. Just gotta clean it up a little bit. Thank you for watching. If you like what you've seen, uh, hit the subscribe button. We'll get her painted up and I'll put some pictures at the end of it showing it all painted up. All right, here it is, the completed project. All together, I got about $150 in the tank. That's including the hasp. Here's the drain. Turned out real, real nice. This is just the primer coat that's on it now. I'll put the final coat of paint on it, maybe even put a bed liner on it. Turned out real, real nice. It's kind of hard to tell. Hope the video shows just how good it did turn out. You can hear how quiet it is. Right here's just a flip up hatch. Pop it up. And there she is. I haven't cleaned the inside of the tank yet. I was just checking it to make sure it was good and watertight. This is uh, my scraps. I put them around the inside of it just to give me something for the door to set solid on to keep water from splashing out. And I had an old aluminum piano hinge. I just repurposed it and stuck it in there. There's my little air box, oxygen box, whatever you want to call it. You can see how much air the thing is producing. If you want to see how this air box is built, just go to my YouTube channel, Team Real in the Blues. That's R E E L I N. I'll put a link up on this video and it'll tell you step by step how to build this box this box is designed to be totally serviceable while it's in the tank you can remove the whole box the box is just sitting on the bottom but you just pull these panels to, to check the filter if you need to check the pump you just pull this panel slide it back and the pump can be removed just like that I can pull it right out or just stick it right back in. Done. Close the thing. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, just ask on the thing. I'll be more than glad to answer them. Thank you for watching.